What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. I didn't tell you, did I? We're back at Copart again. Yes, Copart walkarounds are back on the channel. I mean, for now, who knows what's going to happen in the future, but enjoy it while it lasts, guys, because I think the last Copart walkaround was sometime in March. And it's the end of May, so it's been a while. I'm happy to be back, so big shout out and thank you to Copart out here, 2829 Southeast 15th Street in Dell City, Oklahoma. Come check them out. And number one on our list, we're gonna jump right into this, guys. Look at the G-Wagon. Yes, we have occasionally, we get some cool cars out here. I actually really like this one. I don't know what the damage is yet. I didn't see any, and to be quite honest with you, I was hurrying through uh, making this list for you guys. So I'm not entirely sure what's wrong with this. Let me see what year it is. This is a 2015 G550 with 36,000 miles on the odometer. Where's the dance? The guys, this thing looks like it's new. Oh, that's it? That's it? You gotta be kidding me. It's salvaged over this? Okay, so something happened here. I'm assuming it took, you know, a little crunch right here. You can see it's bent in a little bit here, bent in a little bit here. You're telling me that it's salvaged because of this. Why? What is so special about, okay. Well, does this door not close all the way? Oh, hold on. Let's see. Well, that looks all right. That looks all right. The body lines look decent. Missing a fender flare. This does not look bad to me. Or, or could it be that the axle has been shoved out on this. Look how far that tire sticks out. Let's see what it looks like on the air side. Now, I know we are missing a fender flare. I think that's the way it's supposed to be, guys. I think that tire is supposed to stick out about that far. Yeah, I don't know. I could be wrong. Let's take a look underneath and see if there's something we're missing under here. It looks fine under here to me. How about the suspension? Uh, I think it's all right, guys. What do you think? I don't even know if you can see up under there. But it looks good to me. This doesn't look like a huge deal. Oh, wow. Well, hey, there's a lot of parts that came with this. There's your bumper. Obviously, the bumper is done for. And you can see a lot better in here now. This is totally fixable, guys. But... It looks like they pointed out right here for you. And I love when you get these things that still have the body shop markings on them so you can get an idea of what was going on with it before you buy it. You know, it looks like maybe it just got pushed in a little bit. I don't know. Personally, I think you could put this thing back together and have a wonderful G-Wagon for not too much cash. See what the interior looks like. Very clean. Very clean. You know we gotta try to start this one, right? This thing is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And because it's a Mercedes, it's not gonna start. I guarantee you, it's not gonna start. If it does, I'm not gonna, well, it might start. Hold on, we got, we got gauges, guys. It starts. It does. Blind spot assist and operative. Do not let command distract you from driving. Got it. Look, we got money in here. There's some money. Don't worry, I'm not going to steal the money. So somebody left their, their ponies in here. Unicorns. There's unicorns in here. And there's Ultra She Body Cream. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm not interested in none of that, guys. <laughs> if I bought something like this, it wouldn't be for that. Let's put it in gear, huh? Reverse. Transmission, not at park. Not in park. And the rear camera's working. Drive. Yeah, moves forward. It sure does. Look at that. Put it back in park. There we go. I hear a ticking under the hood. Let's take a peek in there and see... Uh, See what's going on it may be this thing hasn't been started in quite a while you know these things sometimes can sit for a for a really 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 long period of time 
sometimes they just need to get warmed up, get the oil circulating. You hear that lifter tap though. Or valve, it may, these may use valve lash adjusters. I'm not really sure what Mercedes uses inside their engines here. Since they're overhead cams, I'm gonna assume they're valve lash adjusters instead of lifters, but uh, pretty much the same thing. I like this, guys. I like this. This is gonna go for far more than I can afford, but still, it's a beautiful G-Wagon. Moving on. Next is a 2014 Mercedes C300. This is a 4Matic. It's got 90,000 miles on the odometer. And it's got the tow hook out. And it's listed as a run and drive. How bad is this damage back here? I know it's got rear end damage. I just don't know how bad it is. Oh, yeah. Mm. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty bad. All right. It's so hard to tell from the photos, guys. Like, I mean, I knew it took a pretty good hit back here, but in the photos, you can't see where it's actually separated at the, uh, the spot welds here. So, I mean, it totally ripped them out. Yeah, damn. Hey, don't get me wrong. It's fixable. Somebody's going to buy it. Somebody's going to put it back on the road. But uh, I can already tell you that that's not going to be me. Not going to be me. Let's take a look at the interior, see what it looks like. Smell it. This smells all right. It's all right. Interior looks pretty good. Well, then you get to this, and you get to the door handle that's flippy floppy. You get to the seat that looks like someone sharded and blew the seat apart. Eh. Yeah, obviously I'm not interested in this one. But we'll go ahead and fire it up anyway. Might as well. Hey, this is two Mercedes in a row that has started. I almost can't believe it. Two Mercedes in a row that started without a jump pack. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling real good today, guys. I'm feeling really good today. If I could just find the hood release. There it is. Let's see this pretty little V6 under the hood here. Uh, where are they hiding the hood latch? Over there? There it is. There she is. Oh, she's misfiring. That's clear enough. It's clear enough. I felt it when I first started it too. You could definitely feel that there was a misfire. But like I said, a lot of these cars, guys, they haven't run in a while. So when you come out here and you start them up, don't just walk away from them because they started misfiring immediately. Give them a few minutes to warm up and see if it clears up on its own. And remember, ethanol gas is really bad for cars when they when it sits over a long period of time. And some of these cars have been sitting for months full of ethanol. So sometimes all these need, it's just a fresh tank of gas, man. Dry the old gas out of them. I think this one's fine. I actually kind of like this one, guys. I really do. But this one is not for us. Still think it's a clean car, though. It'll make somebody a good car. Somebody will rebuild this for sure. Let's shut her down and move on to the next one. Now, this one was not on my watch list, but a lot of you don't get hail like we get here in Oklahoma and Texas and Colorado and Kansas. So I figured I'd show you guys what real hail damage actually looks like. This car is riddled with it. At first glance, you probably think, well, someone took a baseball bat to it, right? Guys, that's no baseball bat. That is literally hail. We had hail out here the size of grapefruits, not more than a few weeks ago. Hell, it probably wasn't more than a couple weeks ago. Hail the size of grapefruits. Can you imagine that? I mean, think, think about how big a grapefruit is and imagine grapefruits falling from the sky. Obviously, it does significant damage. Each one of these dents, man, <laughs> wow. Yeah, obviously, this is a car totaled 
from from hail i mean look at this look at this this is look at the size of the haildings man isn't that wild oklahoma gets some crazy weather i mean take a look at this right here look at that wow next on my list is one i'm telling you one day maybe not today but one day i'm buying one of these because i've got i just i need to drive one i've seen several youtubers drive them they seem to love them i gotta try one now my fiance says that this is a street legal go-kart <laughs> that's exactly what she said and <laughs> and she's not a car enthusiast so if she feels that way about it i'm sure a lot of people do i don't know i, I think i would consider taking it for a drive what is it a is it 52,000 or 152,000? We'll have to double check that because it almost looks like there was a one there that got smeared off or something that's got bad tires, which tells me it probably wasn't taken care of very well. I'm not going to try to walk through that. Looks, It looks good. It looks good. Other than it looks like maybe it was neglected. Uh, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, there's there's light damage over here. Nothing too serious. Looks like we've got some windshield damage over here. We got some A-pillar damage. A-pillar's been pushed in pretty good right here, so you're at least going to have to pull the skin on this and replace it. The hood's got light damage right here where it meets the fender and the A-pillar. The mirror is missing. We've got some damage to the passenger side door over here. All of this is fixable, though. Let's see how it looks on the inside. It's a manual. Oh, I would buy this. Okay. Okay. Okay, then this is one I'm, don't tell Jessica. I don't want her to know, but I'm thinking about bidding on this one. But we're not gonna tell her though, right? Cause she, she, she would not be happy to see this car in the driveway. I'm just being honest with you. Okay, all right, light damage, no big deal. Let's see if we can get it to fire up and we can check on that mileage. Okay, so the mileage is 152. 587 and we do have gauges so so far guys we are doing really really well getting these cars to fire up for us let's turn that off scoot this seat up just a hair check daytime running lights okay well that doesn't sound promising does it, it says it's a run and drive Uh, hey, it wouldn't be a Fiat if it didn't have some mechanical problems, right? <laughs> it sounds low on compression to me. There we go. There we go. Hey, she just needed... Ooh, it's running rough. It's running real rough. Have engine checked. Check daytime running lights and have engine checked. Yeah, there's definitely something going on here, guys. Definitely. Ooh, give it a little throttle and it's just kind of... I'm going to put it in gear real quick just to see if we have a clutch. Yeah, strong clutch. Strong clutch. Put it in reverse. Yep. All right, then we'll put it over in fifth gear oh yeah she's got a strong clutch definitely okay let's check the important window important window does work I'm gonna bet that this one is listed as mechanical let's take a look under the hood I would say that this could be something as simple as just needing a tune-up but I think we all know that's probably not the case on one of these oh wow yeah she is she's not running well at all guys easy enough to do a tune-up on though she's pissed she is pissed I do wonder what happened here this is an easy fix as far as the uh, the body goes it's not a big deal in fact I would go so far as to say you could actually just kind of fill that in pull it out some probably fill it in sand it down and it'd be all right but uh 
yeah damn the exhaust is on the air so i want to feel how bad that miss is i'm pretty sure it's missing only on one cylinder otherwise it would barely be running at all and it seems like it's running pretty good yeah not too bad not too bad Hundred and fifty thousand miles on a fiat guys i don't know i don't know this is on the list no doubt it's on the list it's something oh it's not misfiring anymore oh it cleared up yeah it's smooth now look at that check engine lights up. well for you guys the lights are all flashing but for me it stopped flashing that's why i said guys don't don't just discount a car like i just did i didn't take my own advice look at that look she's running like a sewing machine now before this engine was sitting here bouncing around it's running well okay okay well now i'm definitely interested in this car it just needed to just needed to be run a little bit i'll bet it fires right up now too let's see yeah right up sport mode activated check the air conditioning you know i'm serious about it when i'm checking things like the air conditioning let's see oh i don't oh we got to push there we go there we go you got to push this button in to turn on the air conditioner and yes it's got cold air and the important window works that's all i need to know guys for me we're not going to tell jessica but this is one on the list next on my list no it's not this little bit of carnage here but my goodness wow that was a that was a hell of a high hit wasn't it no that's not it it's a chrysler lebaron i don't know for sure but this looks like a gtc the convertible one of my i know you're gonna laugh it is a gtc it sure is and i didn't i didn't cheat i didn't know that but yeah that's a gtc right there guys this is and i know i know everybody's gonna say this is a girl's car but this is one of my favorite cars of all time from back in the day i love 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 the lebaron gtc convertible i prefer it to be in red with a white top now this is going to be opposite this is going to be white and it's going to have a red interior and it's probably i don't know hopefully it had the v6 in it let's see it did it had that mitsubishi 3.0 liter six cylinder i don't know how well you guys can see down in there but she's she's done for guys and that's real sad that's real sad this was a great car this had a great motor i wish i could show you the interior but i can't it's all uh, somebody somebody ripped the the thing here i guess so they could get a better look inside maybe hold on let me see if i can squeeze you guys in there maybe you can get a better look at what the interior looked like in these if you hadn't seen one before there's the seat center console i love it guys i do always always had a thing for the little baron gtc convertibles man i would love to get another one one day comment below if you remember these cars and what do you think about them next on my list is a 2012 dodge ram 3500 dually of course it's got the cummins turbo diesel what a beautiful truck or at least it was I think it could still be fixed, although I haven't had a chance to really look and see what the damages are. Obviously, front bumper, front fender, no big deal. It's right here that uh, whatever happened to it, <laughs> whatever happened, happened, guys. And uh, this is a big, beefy suspension. So for something to be able to rip the wheel off, to take the ball joints and everything out, wow, man, wow it looks like everything is still here you still got your spring right there you still got your shock absorber you still got the ball joints so 
you know, obviously ball joints are gonna have to be replaced. You're gonna need a brake line. And unless everything, oh, this fender was pushed back. So there is, there is gonna be some damage up under here. But I think honestly, fender and bumper in the headlight, you'd be able to straighten that out pretty easily. I wonder what the mileage is, three, four, oh, wow. Hey, these trucks don't play around, man. These trucks go forever. 349,000. Oh, and she shows it too. Oh my word, wow. Uh, wow, that's something. <laughs> oh my, what is this? Oh my goodness. Well, I wonder, I wonder what job this truck was performing, man. Some damage to the bed. I mean, a lot of damage inside the bed. This truck was worked. This truck was worked hard. You can see there's the, uh, there's the hub and everything right there. The wheel hub, everything is still attached to it. What is this, a Tommy lift? Yeah, she's banged up pretty good just about everywhere all the way around but truthfully guys truthfully this truck could be put back to work let's see if it'll start first and foremost and then we'll take a look under the hood and see what 350,000 miles looks like under there oh it's listed as a no start i don't know uh, she's gonna need a jump she's gonna need a jump got your trailer brake down here okay let's find the hood release there it is let's take a peek under the hood and uh let's see if we can fire this one up all right this is a uh, time to prove that the noco genius 22500 the gb150 is worth its weight in gold because i guarantee you it's going to start this cummins i guarantee it will unless of course the cummins is damaged and won't start for other reasons uh, and we do have codes p2080 it's flashing the codes on the dash right here p2034 p02e8 yeah 349,000 miles okay we're waiting for that glow plug light to go off no, she's damaged. Yeah. All right. Done deal. Hang it up. I know for a fact that that thing will start this motor, no issue, because that thing has started seven three turbo diesels without hesitation. And this is listed as a non-runner, so, you know, it's one of those things. Check it for yourself. Due diligence, all of that stuff. Sometimes when they say they don't run, they do run. And sometimes when they say they don't run, they actually don't run. So that's a shame to see this beautiful old truck and this amazing 350,000 mile Cummins uh, meet its demise like this. And honestly, it's probably one of the cleanest 300,000 mile Cummins engines I have ever seen. Beautiful motor, guys. All right, let's move on to the next one. Next on my list is a 2007 Buick Lucerne, or Lucerne, I don't know how you pronounce it to be honest with you, and it doesn't really matter. This, guys, is listed as mechanical damage, and it's listed as a non-runner, 104,000 miles, so I wouldn't think there should be anything too serious with it. It's a beautiful car. I don't know how well this is coming out on camera, but the pearlescent in the paint is absolutely phenomenal i mean we've got orange and greens and purples and it's absolutely beautiful you got the gold accents gold 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 i mean this car is for a buick for a buick it's absolutely beautiful and somebody took good care of it because it has good year eagle sport tires on it so it's not like somebody went out and put the cheapest tire they could find on it they put some decent tires on it. the tires have good tread so whatever happened to this had to have happened shortly after they put the tires on it this is the cxs 
We got some paint damage over here, quite a bit of damage over here. Looks like parking lot dings or something on this side. This side took a lot of a lot of beatings, guys. Lots of scrapes and everything around it. Let's go ahead and get in it, take a look at the interior, and then we will pop the hood and see what's going on. We'll check the fluids before we do anything. I see some bolts in the uh, center console there. She looks nice, guys. The interior is, truthfully, it's nice. So is the door panel. Dash looks good. The rear seats, beautiful as well. What about the headliner? Headliner is gorgeous. Look at this car, just all the way around, is really, really nice. Really nice. Now, I don't know what the market's like for one of these right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is a V8. I was not expecting that. <laughs> and I'm a GM guy. I'm a GM guy. And I was like, oh, we're going to have a V6. Somebody took the coil wires off right here. Or the, sorry, not the coil, the uh, uh, injector for uh, probably cylinder number one. The coil bolts are removed as well. So somebody has been under here and it looks like they were having an issue with this cylinder right here which would be cylinder number that wouldn't be number one i'm sorry this engine's this engine's weird guys it's, it's backwards you've got your belts and stuff over here but the intake and stuff is over i'm lost i'm lost so this is going to be the same engine you have in your uh what is it the gxp right uh, the Impala SS front wheel drive that came with the V8 as well. Uh, we had a BG transmission service at 80,000 miles. I do wonder what's wrong with this thing. Obviously, whatever it was, and here's another injector that's been disconnected right here. Yeah, so somebody has been has been messing with the uh, the fuel rail. Also, is missing its cap. So there's definitely something that was going on up here. Let's check the oil. It's full. It does have oil, and the oil is full. This could be interesting, guys. This could be really interesting. I'm curious to see if it even attempts to start, if it cranks over. I love a nice little challenge. And we do have lights, as you can hopefully see there. So we may be able to get this thing to at least crank. Oh, one of the keys just fell off. Well, that didn't sound healthy, did it? It started. It did. It's listed as a non-runner, but it did start. She's trying. Ah, so it's listed as a non-runner, but we know that it runs. What do you think, head gasket? Okay, she runs very bad, but she is running. Okay, so I'll tell you, a lot of gray-ish smoke, and I smell fuel. I smell raw fuel coming out of the exhaust here. So I have no doubt that uh, I believe this is a fuel issue and makes sense because they've got the injectors disconnected, or they had the injectors disconnected. It's like it's loading up on fuel. I'm hoping maybe if it just runs for a second, it'll clear up. No.
Okay, that's enough. That's uh, one more thing I want to check. The fuel gauge. Okay, it does have it does have gas. Just one more time. Come on, old girl. Come on. Come on. Yeah, she's loading up on fuel. Okay. All right. Well, that's enough for me. Um, I am going to leave this one on the list because it's intriguing. There's something going on here, man, and it smells like raw gasoline coming out the back. So I bet if we could get it running long enough to throw some good codes, we could probably find out that it's going to be something like the uh, mass airflow sensor. Or, yeah, this does have a mass airflow. Oh, the mass airflow sensor is disconnected. Somebody's just been under here playing with stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, my first guess was a, was a mass airflow sensor or the, the throttle body. There's a million things it could be. Now that I plug that back in, let's try I may have this thing fixed before we even leave the damn lot. This is crazy. Crazy. Let's see here. A V8 Buick, man. How about that? Come on. Just got to clear that fuel out of it, man. Yeah. Okay. Either way, it's got the Harman Kardon, Harman Kardon stereo in it, man. This thing is loaded loaded this is nice now obviously it's got some pretty pretty major issues going on under the hood somebody was trying to fix it and somebody gave up on it so we'll keep this on the list see what happens last one on the list guys a 2011 dodge charger this is an oklahoma county sheriff car yes i know i know I think this one's a little bit far gone, guys. I do. I do. The whole front end is pushed over like this. It was worth coming out here and looking at because anytime I see a police car now, like, I, I kind of just want to buy it. They've painted over the sheriff. It's still on there, but they just, they blacked it out with, like, spray paint or something. Hmm. Oh, wow. They didn't even bother putting the... Wow. Wow. Look at this. My goodness. That's okay. Okay. Now the rest of the car looks pretty good. Well, this is a non-runner, which doesn't surprise me. It took a, that, this is a really hard front end collision. Really hard front end collision. Oh man. I wonder if it was a pit maneuver, guys. I wonder if the hood will even open. I gotta be, I don't wanna get my hands too far in here because as you can see, it's all jagged and I don't want to, uh, I'm not trying to get cut, you know what I mean? Yeah, that hood is all, it's all jacked up, man. So we're not gonna be able to get under there, I don't think. I would almost bet that this would run with a jump. Obviously it's dead, but I really would bet that it would probably fire up with a jump start. Boy, man. When they're done with these things, they just, uh, oh yeah, yeah, the hood latches. Non-functional. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get in here. And truthfully, I don't think it's really worth the time for me because I really don't have any interest in this. Uh, and I don't want to get cut up. But you can see under here, this thing, this thing took a lot of damage. A lot, a lot of damage. Now, if you were just looking for the good Hemi, you know, this might be, uh, this might be a good project for you. You could pull the motor, the transmission, rear differential, whatever you need out of it. This could definitely work. But for me, I have no use for it. And because it doesn't have the lights and all the cool gadgets and gizmos, I'm really not interested in it either. And with that, we're gonna get out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Comment below, what was your favorite car of this entire video? I'm gonna bet, I'm gonna bet the majority of you are gonna say it was the G-Wagon. For me, 
<laughs> it was the Buick Lucerne. <laughs> I got problems, man. Okay, it probably wasn't the Buick Lucerne. I, I like the G-Wagon too. I really did. I like the G-Wagon as well, but uh, man, that Lucerne is just, maybe it's an easy fix. Maybe. I don't know. Comment below what you think and what you would buy, what your favorite car in this video was. If you enjoyed the content, it's been a long time. Please consider hitting that thumbs up button, man. Take one second out of your day. Click that thumbs up button for me. Do me a huge favor. I would truly appreciate it. Drop your comments down below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, take another second. Click that subscribe button. Click the bell notification icon. And don't forget, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Auto Auction Rebuilds. And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I will catch you all very soon in the next one.